All right, boys, welcome to um, what may be your final episode as host for the SA Voice podcast. Um, all right. I just want to start it off by saying thank you both very much for all the time and effort you've put in over the last year. We've had uh, an absolutely enjoyable time getting to know each other, and I think you guys have brought such a good rapport and a relationship onto this platform. So thank you again. And uh, today's episode is just kind of a wrap up. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on the podcast and uh, some tips that you might be willing to impart on our future hosts. Um, but first, let's have a quick check-in. How have you, uh, how's the last couple of weeks been for you guys? Danny, let's start with you. Uh, not too bad. Uh, I went back to work. So that's been fun. It's, it's all right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm officially in essential service. Is this Costco? Yep. Nice. Yep. Uh, so I'm a grocery store employee. So uh, the cool thing about that is I'm getting more, more people are saying thank you now than they did when I was in the army. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. So other than that, you know, it's been, it's been good, you know, trying to stay, stay motivated, stay safe, yeah. you know, keep chill. How has the mood been amongst grocery shoppers at the store? Is it still kind of a panic like it was back in March and April or things are kind of calmed down now, right? So I didn't work um, really March or April, really much of it anyway. Uh, so I don't know, right? Um, and things, you know, well, you know, Costco, it's like things change every day. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, I would go into work one day and it's like, this is the standard. This is how we're doing things. And it's like, okay, cool. And then by the end of the day, it's like, okay, I got the system down. All right. You come to work the next day, it's completely changed, you know? Yeah. So now, like, can you give it some examples of like what what that's looked like? Like, what 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 was it like on your first day back, and what is it like today? Okay, so let me give you some pre-Corona uh, um, examples of like Costco. Like, you go in, you shop. Like, you just walk in, obviously. Um, yep. you, you do your shopping, and then when you're done, you go to the register, and you because uh, it's a membership warehouse uh, grocery kind of thing. You give the cashier your your card. And then they ring you out um, and then you go on your merry way, right? So like how it is now is there is a lineup um, outside the store and it's forever long, you know, there yeah. are things that it's yeah. forever long. I've driven by and it's just like, I couldn't imagine just standing inside that line, like ridiculous. At the, I will say, I will say at the longest uh, you will probably wait is probably 40 minutes. So it's not terrible, but me personally, not terrible. I'm not standing in that line. That's 40 more minutes than I want to wait in line. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so, okay. So then when I first came back to work, it was, um, so my job in, in Costco was to like kind of get people to upgrade to the, uh, to the um, upper echelon of membership, you know, uh, try to get them to buy a credit card and things like that, right? Like the sales portion of it. Um, that's so that's been completely almost almost gone. Like the, that that position doesn't really exist anymore. Wow. Um, yeah. So what they had me doing was um, was basically like the grocery bagger. You know, the person that just puts all of your stuff in the in, in your grocery cart. So when I first came back to work like there was just a big piece of glass where the, for the cashiers and for stuff like that. Um, you have to put your, your Costco card against the glass and it'll get scanned. So like, like the, the cashier isn't touching your, your membership card. Uh, there was one person that was taking everything out of your cart and putting it on the belt. The, the cashier would ring everything through and there would be a third person taking all that stuff and putting it back in the cart. Every, every single person has to wear a mask every day, regardless, and you had to wear gloves. Even right? customers have to wear masks? Nope, just employees. Okay. So flash forward to today, um, now there's back to two people at the cash register. Um, you, there's still the glass, but they took out two cash registers, and so they spaced out the registers that they do have. So they spaced them out. Um, because before it was every other register was open, right? So now they took two of them out, they're spaced out, so now they're all open. And you still have to wear a mask. Employees now have to wear a mask 
even when shopping. So I may not be working that day, but I'm shopping. I have to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and really, that's really the biggest one, you know, that's, but every day in between, like where we are now and my first day, there was, there was some sort of change. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, for me, I didn't really want to work with near a lot of people. So, um, I'm working outside. I'm working, um, like I just go grab the, the shopping carts from the corral and I put them back where, where the people needed to get them and I disinfect them every time I, I, I grab them and I disinfect them. Now, it's, uh, I, you're talking about the lines and how big the lines are. Are you noticing inside Costco? Like, is it a lot less busier inside? Like, are people uh, like, cause you know, I've, I've been to Costco and it's just the worst experience sometimes dry, dragging around that cart and everyone's in your way. And those carts are huge. Those carts are, you know, bigger than any grocery store. <laughs> and it's like, you, you walk around and so are you noticing there's a little bit more free space uh, for people to walk around or people a little bit more, feel a little bit more relaxed when they're in the store at least? So I'll put it, I'll put it like this, uh, that, that, that question is, has two answers. One is yes, because there are obviously limiting how many people are in the store. Right. Yeah. Um, so yes, there is that aspect. And the second aspect of this is you heard it here first folks is Costco is not that busy anymore. Ooh. Every single day that I have worked it, there is less and less people. I've been in the store shopping a few times and it's um, as bad as this pandemic has been, it has made shopping at Costco more enjoyable. Less people, <laughs> less lineups, more choice, uh, more stuff on the shelves because there's less shoppers. Um, so that's well, one. Thank God up. for that. Slight, I, right? <laughs> I, but I, I, at, this, at the same time though, just because there's less people doesn't mean that Costco is making less money because people are buying for other people. Yes. Right. You know, so like I'm, I'm looking at while like on a normal day pre COVID, we're looking at people like maybe you're just going in to get a few groceries. Maybe you're just going to go get like some maybe just like I said, just a few groceries, like stock up on your freezer. Right. Or something like that. And that's it. And then like the big, huge, huge shopping carts full of, 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 um, of food um, like you didn't see. I mean, you obviously see that a lot, but it wasn't like you see it a lot. You know, now I'm looking at big, huge shopping carts full, two people, like a person with two shopping carts full. Um, I'm, I'm seeing that probably, um, I don't know, two, uh, two out of five people, yeah. you know, three out of five people are, are shopping like that. that now. Where at maybe before it was maybe one wow. out of five. So less people okay. buying more things. It kind of makes up for, for the lack of exactly. shoppers. Yeah. The worst part has been uh, no more samples. No more free samples, boys. You know, that's, I think it's funny because it's like, what I like about um, working at Costco or working a job similar to that where it's like you get to see so many different people every day is that, you know, it's like you can make a joke and then like, as you know, like the day goes on or whatever, you can perfect your joke, you know, because so many different people. <laughs> so that's been kind of one of my jokes that I've been telling people. It's like, you know, it's like, come, come to Costco. It's like where you have to go through this giant, you know, maze, this huge lineup like Disneyland, except, you know, at the end of the line, there's no samples. <laughs> you know, oh, like, man. nothing. That, that no was reward. like, if I had a lunch break, I would go and get my samples. Although they are giving out a free lunch. So that's good. Oh, so, so, yeah, so what's the cafeteria like? Like, are people allowed to still just come in for food if they want to? Is that a thing anymore? What's yeah, going on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if all you like are hot dogs, um, mm. that is the only thing that they're selling to the public are hot dogs. Wow. And, really? and ice cream, I think. Why is that? So no, no more pizza, no more burgers, nothing like that? Nothing. I, why, I don't know. Um, is just... I think it's kind of like, so, I mean, you guys, you guys have been to Costco. So it's like, it's, it's at the, the restaurant is at the, where the cash register is. And that's like where people for whatever reason, just like to be, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's like, Oh, I'm done. I paid and I'm just going to stand here. It's like, just get out of the store, go home. They just stand there for whatever reason. So I think, I think that's a big reason why. 
is mm-hmm. that, um, it, it's, it has limited the amount of people that just stand there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That makes sense, I guess. Well, Danny, thanks for the Costco check. And Reed, how are things with you? Can you let us know um, any news, what's going on with your band? How are things on that front? Uh, in terms of music right now, honestly, every, everything's been put to a halt. I mean, everything was put to a halt about two months ago. Um, you know, I, I've, I've been talking with a lot of my musician friends. Um, and to a lot of us, I mean, it, this is just sort of like a period of reflection, right? Whereas, you know, um, one of the things and, uh, that her and I were just talking about was the fact that, you know, we identify with ourselves with the things that we do. Right. So like, you know, people look like might look at me and be like, oh, Reed, he's a musician. And that's how people would identify me and describe me. Whereas like, you know, we're all sitting here doing the same thing. You know, we're all just sitting at home um, and we're and, and whether we're trying to work or whether we're, we're not, you know, we're we're all working from home. And there's nothing that really um, identifies us in, in such a in a separate way anymore. Um, so it's kind of nice to just sit here and and just kind of do a lot of reflecting and just and relaxing and, and figure out what do I want to do with my life? And does that mean going back into music? P- probably. But I think, you know, the stress of not needing to prepare for gigs and to get up on stage, um, it's been a bit relaxing. Obviously, I miss it in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, it, it's hard to think about because we don't know what the foreseeable future is. We don't know when we're going to be able to have big concerts again, because that's pretty much the last thing that's going to be accepted mm. into society again is big concerts, sports games, like any kind of entertain live entertainment. That's the last thing that we're going to, we're going to get to. Um, and who knows what that looks like, even when it does come back. So to think about it and to, to know when I'm going to go back is just, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense to focus on because it's so unknown. Um, so honestly, right now, you know, the way I see it is I'm retired for the foreseeable future. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's all I can do. Right. And, you know, I'm trying to be a little bit creative and do some writing, but you know, I've, I've even talked to some people that, um, you know, are avid writers and it's sort of like, I don't know what to talk about right now, you know, other yeah. than this and no one really wants to hear about this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like it's sort of because we, you know, the way we write is all in our daily experiences, all through influences of talking to each other and just having, you know, just um, nostalgia and just like, you know, these, these all all sorts of endorphin feelings that we, we go to into our day to day lives and everything's more of the same these days. So, um, for everyone, it's, 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 yes, exactly. And, um, so it's just a challenging thing. Um, but you know, I'm, I I recognize that I say a lot of this with with a ton of privilege. You know, I'm able to um, be at my cottage with my dad and just sort of spend a lot of time there to just kind of reflect. Um, and as much as I'd like, you know, to to work right now, I I kind of fear going into um, working environments. You know, like I I applaud you, Danny, for for being at Costco. Um, uh, on those days and like you know you're taking a risk but and you you're you're doing what you got to do right like it's you know a lot of people have no choice and I think I'm just thankful to kind of just have a moment of reflection yeah it's a great sentiment thanks for sharing that Reed I appreciate that and I definitely echo that too we're uh we're definitely pretty well off here in Kingston compared to some other places in the world we got roofless over our head and we got food in our fridge so we're thankful for that That's Not yeah not yeah. everybody, and, you're right. Yeah, you're right. and exactly, you know, like, you know, we're, we live in a community where it's, I think, you know, we had 0.0004% of our population um, affected by COVID, which is pretty, pretty amazing given the circumstances all, all around the world. Um, and, you know, and, and those sound like pretty isolated cases. Uh, so, you know, yeah, I'm just thankful to live here. Yeah, me too. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so boys, we all know um, kind of your experiences kind of coming on and working on the podcast here in the last year. Um, unfortunately, we are losing you after today's episode. Um, Reed might join us for an interview with Ryan Gill later on in the summer. Um, but I'd love to hear just kind of a couple of the things, like what are the things you got the most out of the podcast and what you enjoyed the most? And uh, 
um, where you would maybe love to see the podcast go as a fan and not a host in the next year? Let's start with you, Danny. Me? Oh, Guys, wow. please. <laughs> I hadn't thought about this question. Okay. So where – I'll start off with what, what I learned, I guess. Yeah. Um, not a whole lot. No. <laughs> 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 nothing <laughs> nothing next no it's i did learn a lot you know it's um uh we, we started the podcast uh while still in school um so it was a, it was good kind of like um you know help me like um do like a, an extracurricular activity right and like be able to manage my time to be able to you know um yeah, basically, you know, you know, between my classes and my work that I needed to do, you know, and then fit in the podcast, you know, with interviews and being able to talk to people because it, the podcast isn't just kind of like, oh, you come on, it's like, you have to be on. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, definitely help me figure that out, you know, like how to be, you know, even on the days it's like, man, I don't really you know, I'm not feeling it or something, you know, or I'm not feeling good. You know, it's like, well, you know, the show must go on. Yeah. You know, so that was good. Um, where I would like to see the podcast go as a, as a fan, I think I would like to see, um, a little more, you know, you know, talking to the people, you know, the people that make the college, the college, you know, um, some more of that kind of stuff, you know, I really do enjoy how we've made and grown, um, the podcast brand. So, you know, I'd like to keep it kind of see it kind of go in that similar direction, basically. So you think, um, some more interviews or questions with, um, school administration, is that kind of what I'm saying? No, I, I don't know about school administration. Um, you know, just more like, you know, the people that, that that are SLC who like who is SLC yeah you know what I mean is it is it us is it that you know that 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 person you know during their work in the calf you know like just frantically before their deadline is it that is it the little old lady that cleans the calf tables you know what I mean uh, like who is SLC that's who I that's who I would like to see um come on basically right is is just like who who, who are all these people? The people that we see, but the people that we don't know. Yeah, it's a good point. I think this platform is definitely a great um, usage for people to be able to tell their stories. And uh, thanks for that sentiment. I, can, uh, I think we should definitely try to get more of the people behind the scenes on. So um, obviously it might be a little difficult with us not being able to allow back in the building, but in the fall, we can definitely try to make that a priority. So yeah, for sure. I think, uh, I think that's kind of a cool point of view for sure. How about you, Reed? Anything you can kind of add on top of that? I know it's kind of a long-winded kind of answer or question, totally. but fire away. Absolutely. I think, you know, uh, first it started from me learning that there was a fourth floor in St. Lawrence <laughs> College. And then, you know, and obviously in bigger picture, I think, um, you know, I, I learned about all the different parts, just as Danny said, all the different pieces that make SLC, SLC. Um, and whether that's a club, or just a certain part, uh, just a certain administration or a certain organization within the college and how they all sort of interconnect. Um, uh, and I think, you know, the biggest thing when Danny and I were thinking about doing this and when we, when we came to the essay about doing a podcast, our goal in the beginning was, I think, to connect the student body to, to the school. Um, and one of the, I think the biggest thesis that we got out of this year um, with many of the different interviews was get involved you know, whether that's, you know, join a club, join athletics, or uh, just do something in the school outside of the classroom. That was the biggest thing that we heard. That, like, that was the that was repeating the story. One. Yes, absolutely. Um, that was the number one answer that we got. So, and I think the way I saw it was, I think at the beginning, I saw this as a way for the students to connect to the school. And the way I see it is, uh, you know, it's, it, 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 and that's, this is a great platform to do that, but I think um, students are going to get involved and there's, there's so many other ways uh, for students to get involved. And there's so many other ways of admin and people encouraging their students to get involved. So I think, you know, 
moving forward, I think the best thing to do is to implement the St. Lawrence College into the community. And maybe this is what the podcast needs to do. Um, you know, and we had a great interview with the mayor. Um, and we talked about all sorts of things going on in the community wise that students are doing. Um, and so I think that's the biggest thing is I find that the university and the college are sort of th two different separate communities apart from the Kingston community. And I think it's important that, you know, especially a time like now, you know, it's important that we all come together um, and recognize that it, it's, it's it, everything, all these communities in Kingston make up what Kingston is. Yeah. Um, so, and so I, and I think, you know, especially from students that are coming from out of town that go to St. Lawrence that aren't from Kingston, you know, and I'm, I, I grew up here, so I've kind of, I have the best of both worlds. Um, but I think, you know, just making sure that students know all, everything that they have access to in their school, not just in their school, but everywhere around them in, in Kingston. Yeah, I definitely echo that. I definitely think, um, some of the biggest takeaways from first producing and then starting to jump on as a host has just been how willing people are wanting to help you. Like when you say yeah. I'm a student and I have a podcast, everybody is willing to help you. Um, like I said, we got the president of the college on, we had the mayor, we had lots of faculty, we had tons of, tons of students. So um, people just want to be a part of something. And I think that um, what we talked about when we started this, I think this is going to be a fantastic legacy piece for you guys to be the original host. And this is passed on. And from what I can tell with working in this uh, student organization, student association, this podcast isn't going anywhere. So hopefully yeah. in 10 years, when you guys come back, it will still be running and you can say, <laughs> that was mine. That was me. I was the OG. It was the, uh, oh, yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah. I think it's something to be kind of proud of. Um, and I think the first year definitely was a, a learning experience for everybody. Totally. Um, we had never done it. How do you start? How do you run a podcast, right? We had no idea. Yeah. So it was kind of cool to come together and kind of run it. Um, we had some ups. We had some downs. Um, but I, I'm definitely excited for where this thing goes in the next two, three, four, five years for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and that's a continuous, you know, research cycle, right? Like, you know, um, we always want to make sure, making sure that we're asking the students what they want to see on this. Yeah, so I exactly. think that's one of the, uh, you know, um, another one thing that we got to be doing, it's like, Hey, we're doing a podcast. And even, you know, if it becomes, you know, like a successful thing for the students and we're, and we're starting to see some good out of it, you know, making sure that we're always continuing to ask what, what do you want to see out of this and how can we get you more involved? Yeah. Always, uh, strive to be better and ask for feedback. Cause you're, um, my favorite, one of my favorite Warren Buffett quotes is your least happy customers are your greatest source of learning. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's what I enjoy. So knowing what you guys know as hosts and you guys are seasoned vets and you guys can carry um, fantastic conversations, you're both fantastic interviewers. What are maybe um, some tips or pieces of recommendations you could give to hosts that we have coming on later this summer? So I'm going to make, I'm going to recommend that our new hosts listen to this episode just to kind of pick up um, what you guys are saying. So um, what, do, what do you guys think there? What do you, what do you think that new hosts need to kind of, be proficient at or what are some recommendations you have for them? I think, um, you know, it's like every Michael Jordan needs a Scottie Pippen. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't matter, you know, like I feel like, um, like with Reed and I, especially, you know, I think we make a great team because um, Reed is an excellent interviewer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He just has really great questions to, to be able to lead and go through conversations. Right. Um, and you know, it's like, and, and here I am, you know, it's like just kind of, you know, picking up the ball and, you know, kind of keeping it moving, you know, keeping it light, making a couple jokes, things like that. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of like, uh, like I said, you know, it's like every Jordan needs their Pippin. Yeah. You know? Um, so, you know, just kind of like something like that, you know? Um, yeah, you know, you need some good dynamics, a good um, working relationship. Even if you don't know, even if the, the new hosts don't know each other, have never met each other, they need to be able to work together, be able to bounce off of each other, um, you know, it's like pick up what the other person's putting down and be able to just like, if there's, a, if there's a lull, if there's a quiet time, if there's a space, if there's something, it's like, boom, the other person can pick it up, you know, without any problem, any hesitations, right? 
Yeah, and it, it takes a little while to get to that point, um, especially if uh, the new hosts haven't had time to really sit and build a camaraderie. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely love that recommendation. Like you said, you just got to be able to pick up on those nonverbal cues when you're in an interview or having a playing a game or something. Um, remember your listeners are your end goal. And uh, like you said, you want to provide some quality content and always be on the ball. So I, I love that point of view. Thanks for sharing that, Danny. Um, Reed, what can you kind of exp explore on there? I think uh, the biggest thing, uh, and, and just going off of that too, yeah, like chemistry is really important. I mean, like, uh, Danny and I knew each other for a little while before we came on here. Um, and it was great to get to know Elle and you, Leighton, uh, throughout this process. So, you know, the chemistry kind of build as you went on. And obviously that's really important. And and to know that chemistry, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be like the best of friends. You know, some of the greatest um, TV hosts and greatest radio hosts, they don't hang out outside of their job. They have a great working environment. So as long as you're able to, you know, establish team roles and, and, and like establish um, what everyone's supposed to do uh, and you can build chemistry that way it doesn't have to it can be just from a professional standpoint um, and you can start that off pretty quickly uh, it yeah. just depends how much willing you're put you're willing to put into it um, I and so I think uh, there's that I, I think you know one of the things my dad has always taught me is preparation is the most important thing before you do anything um, and when it comes to it, it's funny because but when it comes to a podcast, I think this is a this is a platform where you can you it, over preparing is is a thing. Um, you don't want to over prepare because you know when you, it's podcasts are very different from any radio show because radio shows have have huge formats um, and it's supposed to flow a certain way, whereas podcasts are supposed to flow the way that it goes. So I think it's, it's really important to understand who you're interviewing, what are the, what's the background and come up with an angle of, um, okay, what are people are going to be curious about and why do people care? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, prepare some questions, but just prepare to have a conversation with this person, yeah. you know, and just, and, and which goes into just be, cu be curious what, you know, like you, you, you can't just talk about yourself the whole time. Um, and you know, when you're interviewing someone, what's that? But can I? Oh, well, of course, of course, you know, you can, you, you can insert yourself into the interview if, if it makes sense. Right. But, um, you know, just always be curious about what they have going on. And, and again, it goes back to, you have to think why, why, uh, as an audience member, why do I care? Yes, for sure. I love that sentiment. Um, and I agree 100%. I think uh, when I first started coming on as a host, I was a little bit nervous. I had all these questions. I was overprepared and I was sticking to a script, but I sounded robotic. And you just kind of yeah. got to go with the flow and you just have to kind of ask questions and insert them as they come up. Yeah. Um, you don't want to sound like you're talking from a script like this all the time. And you know what I mean? So, yeah. Th thank you for sharing. That's a great sentiment. I love that. Um, where would you like to see the podcast grow and uh, go in the next year? read yeah i think um gosh uh again like i i'd love for just more students to know about it right you know as obviously this is our first year um and this is a legacy piece right so this was an issue you know at the very beginning we all agreed that you know we would move on after a year or so and that's due to us graduating everything but i think um from what the plan was set in place you know year after year new hosts will be there um, and that's for the fact of like, it's not about the host who are doing this podcast. It's about the school. The school is the biggest host of this whole thing. Um, so just making sure that, you know, more students are aware of the podcast, but also just more aware of what's going on in their school. Um, and I think, so the biggest stat to know is student involvement, how, what percentage of the students are, are getting involved. And if there's an increase in that, you know, a significant increase, and, and, and you can direct that to an influence on the podcast, then that would be the, the greatest thing ever. Yeah, exactly. Off of that, you know, it's kind of like, uh, like back to like, you know, it's like, what, what, what do you want to see? What do I, what do you want the audience to know? It's like, you know, it's like, well, a little, some feedback, you know, it's like, um, of what, what's going right, what's going wrong and what needs to stay and what needs to go. Right. Um, you know, cause we're getting, you know, our viewership and our listenership is, is all right. But you know, it's like, but is it, is it, could it be better? It could always be better. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Always. And I, th I think, uh, 
I think we're getting there. I think you've seen with our social media in the last couple months, we've ramped that up. We've got Ashley, our wonderful graphic designer, kicking some butt behind the scenes for us. So we're starting to look a bit more professional and put together. Um, and I think the next step is once we have that well put together brand image, we can grow it more. I think we, you know, we still have under 100 people on our YouTube, um, our Spotify and our uh, SoundCloud uh, playlists have some decent listen listenership, but it's not it's not in the hundreds, right? It's still there. Um, so that's that's my plan is to kind of once we get a new host situation is to grow it obviously and great and push it and a lot of that just uh is word of mouth and sharing it and like you echoed earlier uh 10 minutes ago reed is relevant topics you know people want to talk and they want to listen about stuff that interests them sometimes it can be educational sometimes it can just be you know a way to blow off steam and they just want to listen to people crack jokes and, mm -hmm. and talk and talk piece right so well and, and that's the best way to grow your list, listeners right you know i th and i think you know some of the mistakes that we made at the beginning was um we we had this this image in mind of when we were going to be interviewing someone it was you know oh well this 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 will you know help us with with the reputation and this will help us grow our listenership and it didn't work out the way that we wanted it to and and i think we we got a little discouraged by that at, at some times and, you know, and then it's one of those things that it's like, you can't get discouraged by something that in a way can be a little out of your control sometimes. Yeah. Um, so I think just as long as, you know, you focus on the content, then all that will fall into place. Yeah, I think so too. I think, um, I think the base is there. We poured a good solid foundation and uh, I think it'll be cool to see where this goes in the next couple of years, even after, I leave next year and uh, I'm graduated and I'm all done and I'm a working man. Um, I'm definitely going to tune back in and check in and listen to a couple episodes a month and just kind of see what's popping, what's going on in the old, uh, Where it went, old where it's going. exactly. So it'll be, it'll be definitely interesting to see. So thank you both of you for sharing that. Um, what are, uh, what are some things you might miss about being on here? What are a couple things that you uh, will kind of find yourself longing for in a month or two? The spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, I know Reed's a musician, you know, so he's got that. But, you know, I mean, it's not like it's the spotlight, but, you know, it's like I did, I did like, you know, having the microphone in my face, you know, the camera right there, um, talking to someone new, uh, you know, fig, you know, I, I, I do, I do, very, I do enjoy that. I like that a lot, you know, so definitely that's going to probably be the thing that I miss the most. You know, is, is being, you know, in that innovation hub, you know, with a mic in my face, yeah. just talking. It's really what I do best, run my yeah. mouth. I think um, with the whole COVID situation, unfortunately, we won't be back in a studio anytime soon. You'll see a lot more of these virtual type interviews, um, which keeps people safe. But also, it uh, it's not quite the same, eh, boys? It's not quite like it was. Not the same. No, yeah, definitely no, not. no. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think the biggest thing that I'll miss too is, you know, over the past year, I've, I've met so many people, you know, like we interviewed a whole lot of people. How, how many interviews did we do? Like oh, 40, 50. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. And, you know, and, and people who I, who I never would have met um, if it weren't for this, you know, um, and that's one of those things. Cause you know, we wanted to get involved we wanted to know our school a little bit more. Um, and it was nice from an, as an outsider coming in to just get involved a little bit more, even if it was just asking some questions. Well, um, you know what's cool about that too is that like all the people that we interviewed and everyone that we talked to, you know, you're just and then you're just walking down the hall and it's like you said, it's like person that you never would have never talked to. Yeah, and there they are. It's like, oh, I just talked to you last week. Hey, what's up, new friend? You know? Yeah. And it's, and then that's how it was like the whole year. It's just like, Oh yeah. I remember we did the thing, you know, that's cool. Yeah. You know? Um, so that, that's, you know, the friendships and the, the people that we met, that was really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll echo that for sure. 100%. Um, yeah. If it wasn't for this platform, we wouldn't have been speaking to the people we did and building the relationships and, uh, you know, you walk down the hallway and there's a few student entrepreneurs that you guys interviewed back in November and you know who they are and they know you and it's just that camaraderie and community. So I definitely. Yeah. And, and you guys get that with the essay every day, you know, and I think that's one of the nice things too, is that like, um, one of the things that, you know, you guys were so nice about is, you know, our office is open 
And that wasn't even just to Danny and I, you know, they, you know, it, there was a message that they wanted to make sure that everyone made sure that this office was open to the entire student body who wanted to come in, you know, like this is, this is the student's office just as much as theirs. Um, so I think, you know, and we just want to thank, you know, this, the entire SA for being so welcoming and open to having us do this and, and allowing us and, and just starting this platform and allowing us to be on it and all, all the future hosts who uh, continue to do it. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, and like I said, we've absolutely been thrilled with, um, the quality that you guys brought and, uh, I can definitely speak for myself here when I say um, when this all ends, I think I've met a few friends for life in you two. So regardless, of, regardless of podcast hosts, bros. <laughs> My man. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you gentlemen uh, for your time. It's been fantastic to kind of go through this experience with you guys over the last month. Um, I can't thank you enough. And um, yeah, I guess we'll wrap it up there. And uh, again, thank you. We're very, um, we're very appreciative of what you guys have brought and where this podcast is going. So thank you gentlemen for being the original hosts on the SA voice podcast and uh, cheers to your future. Well, thank you Great. Thank for, for giving us the platform uh, to do the podcast that we wanted to do for sure. Absolutely. Okay, gentlemen, I'll sign off one final time. You guys take care of yourself and we'll see you on the flip side. All right. Great.